गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन इट्स सिक्स एम नाउ एंड यू हैव टू गेट रेडी टू गो फॉर आबू सिंबल आबू सिंबल हिया वी कम Sitting on the bank of Lake Nasser is one of Egypt's most striking monuments, the twin temple of Abu Simbel. It is located around 300 km south of Aswan and just 20 km north from the border with Sudan. The road to Abu Simbel from Aswan is very good and the cars do go fast. It takes around 3 hours to reach via a desert highway. We visited mirages all over the road. and while we stopped we did manage to capture a glimpse of it our driver joked that you will soon see the nile over the road welcome to abu simbel we just checked into the city abu simbel It's an amazing place to stay just next to the great temple of Abu Simbel. So, a little bit of information before we go to the temple. Most of the people start their visit on Abu Simbel from Aswan and they come for a day trip. So, they start at Aswan very early in the morning and reach here kind of 8 7:30 around that time. And they leave around midday. So, the best time to visit the temple is from the morning 6 o'clock when it opens till around 7:38 and in the evening after midday till it closes. which is around 5:36 so that's what we are going to do and hopefully on the way we are going to capture some beautiful visuals and share with you so stay tuned and see you at the temple before entering the temple let me show you something very interesting the temple was constructed at the western bank of lake nasser around 1244 bc and it was actually at the bank of the lake Over time it was covered by sand and archaeologists rediscovered it in the early 19th century. Like the Philae temple of Aswan, the great temple of Abu Simbel was also threatened by the construction of high dam. So the temple was moved to its current location. An amazing feat of engineering can be seen here. There is a documentary in YouTube about all this. We'll put the link in description below. Have a look. It's fascinating. The temple is just few minutes walk from the ticket counter. You can take a buggy service there, but we preferred a leisure walk. Wow! That's incredible. the giant statue of ramesses the second most influential pharaoh of egypt Now comes the most interesting part of the temple. 
It is believed that the axis of the temple was positioned by the ancient Egyptian architects in such a way that on October 22nd and February 22nd, the rays of sun would penetrate the sanctuary and illuminate the sculptures on the back wall, except the statue of Pha, a god connected to the realm of dead who always remained in the dark. These dates are allegedly the king's birthday and coronation day respectively. There is another temple made for Nafarteri, the most beautiful and favorite wife of Ramesses II. Oh, by the way, this man was tremendous romantic. He had over 200 wives and 100 children. Abhishek, do you want a few more? No, I had enough with one each. <laughs> Here comes the beautiful temple of Nafatiri. This concludes our visit of the spectacular Abu Simple. I hope that you have enjoyed in the same way we did. And if so, please give us a thumbs up. It means a lot to us. If you didn't subscribe yet, please do so. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our upcoming videos. So we will sign off from Abu Simple now. See you at our uncommon and unseen place of Egypt next. Ciao for now. We will end with the spectacular light and sound of Abu Simba. Definitely the best in Egypt. The light and sound starts with the explanation of the massive work undertaken by UNESCO to move the temple to protect it from flooding. Then comes a tribute to the great Ramses II follows an emotional and powerful explanation of why this temple is his favorite creation during the long 67 years he ruled the unified Egypt. Explanation of the precision of the ancient Egyptian architects who made the temple following the movement of the sun. After that, some story of Ramses being the god and his record and power in the battlefield. Next, an explanation of the knowledge and prosperity during his time in Egypt. Followed by an explanation on the importance of Nile flood on the society and related festivals. Finally, about his favorite queen, Nafarteri. The show ends with a beautiful light over the great temple depicting how it might have looked at its prime.